Well, hello everybody and welcome back to G-Bears Off-Grid Ways, homestead in the desert. This is January 15th, 2020. Yep, this is the afternoon. The afternoon after Pierre left with Heat Seeker Bus. He did call me around lunchtime and say he was at a road re roadside rest area taking a break. So uh, I just wanted to say hi to Pierre and uh, hope your trip is going well. I know it was up to that point. Let's make sure it keeps going that way. All right, so here I got 118.83 square feet of R19, which is going to end up in the ceiling in this new patio room for insulation. But I've got some wiring that I'm going to run first for my, where my TV is going to move to. So uh, I'll be getting that done within the next couple of days, and I'll show that to you. All right. Next, I uh, found the problem on my, uh, why I wasn't getting comments from it, all of you followers out there and all my subscribers. Well, what had happened, I don't really know how it happened, but somehow on my YouTube studio, I went on the big computer, and I found all of my regular subscribers were suddenly being all sent to a folder called um, hold for review and uh, or held for review and uh, then about uh, another 20 of them were in the spam folder i don't understand wh how those settings got changed i think it might have something to do with when i've changed the settings uh, to meet the new criteria for youtube where they uh, they want you to um, state whether or not your channel content is okay for kids. And uh, I went on there and I changed it. Or I clicked on the thing that said, no, it's not okay for kids. Because the other two options meant I would be um, demonetized and uh, so forth and so on. So the only option I had was to click on, no, it's not for kids. Although I don't see why kids couldn't watch this video, these videos and... Uh, learn a little bit uh just kind of one of those silly criteria things that some uh, bureaucrat sat in an office and said you know what we should do this i don't know it's kind of silly to me but anyway i think i've got it straightened out because i've been getting comments uh, back all day and i did go on and i did answer all those other comments although there were a couple of comments on there with some questions and i'm going to cover those right now Let's start in the battery room. One of the questions I was asked was, how many amp hours are my batteries? Well, I've been through this before, and uh, I will do it again, just because I was asked. All right, so here we go. Let me get this in the right position here. I gotta reach in between the batteries. Oops, can't cover the camera. Let's see if I can get this. All right, so there is the information that you're looking for, right here. Okay, these are US 2200 deep cycle 6 volts, and I have these wired in series parallel. So they're 232 amp hours each, which it says right there. And in series parallel, you connect uh, positive to negative. Uh, between two batteries because I want a 12 volt system and these are 6 volt batteries as it says right there a deep cycle 6 volt so that makes this a 12 volt battery that leaves me a positive and a negative pole to work off of so um, I've explained this before I'll just tap on it real uh, quick again these are 232 amp hours each that does not mean that you add this one to this one when you connect them um, in series parallel that means that those two, the amps stay the same, okay? So the 232 amp hours is still 232 amp hours between those two. It, it, it doesn't up the amps at that point. All it does is up the volts. So I went from 6 volt and added 6 volts to it. I, went, I upped the 12 volts, but the amps remain the same at 232. So every two batteries is 232 amp hours. Okay, and I, right now I have 18 batteries. I'm, I need six more to complete my uh, battery bank to the size that I want. But I'm having no problems with um, electricity as I need it. As you can see up here, 
Um, it's late in the afternoon, going on 4 o'clock, 4 p.m., and I've still got 13.5, dropping 13.4 on and off. But yeah, that's fine. Then we come over here to the stats on, on this unit, and you can see that I'm putting 232 volts out. That's because I've got this uh, grid tie um, unit. And I was also asked at that point to go over this unit, okay? So right now my power factor is 100. It just dropped back a little bit, but uh, I'm putting, I'm using uh, 39, 40 amps of power. That's because I've got everything running inside because my voltage was all up to 14.3, 14.4, and uh, I had to use some of it up. So I did. All right, so that's a... Uh, that covers that. Okay, so this is a power jack, 8,000 watt, low frequency. The LF stands for low frequency. Okay, so this is a 120 amp unit. This will uh, max out at 120 amps. And the LF PSW is um, low frequency, pure sine wave, 8,000. But its surge is rated at 32,000 or 32 kilowatt. That's the peak surge. So this is really, I, I really am happy with this uh, power jack. It has done everything that they said it would do. So I'm really happy with that. Um, I don't think they make this model anymore. Uh, they do make the, the, the one with the same stats, but it now has a fan in the top here. And, uh, I, that's for keeping them cool because they do get hot, but uh, I don't know if I'd like that or not. I'd have to put something over it so things like this wouldn't fall into the fan, I guess. And this one has uh, just vents on the end here, and it has a fan on this end. And the fan comes on when this thing gets warm, but because it's been kind of cool this winter time, it's fine. I also have a... Uh, a CPU fan here mounted with some vents here and um, that's hooked up to the um, utility uh, point on this uh, controller so I can turn it on manually or if the if the uh, batteries get overcharged to a certain point where they're they're way up it'll automatically turn on and that'll suck heat out of this room um, I don't usually see that happening in the winter time, but in the summertime, it's it's a needed thing. All right, so I got that one covered. So let's move around the other way. Uh, David asked me about uh, um, the mounts that I made or the racks I made for my solar panels. Okay, so this is what I did. Uh, I got my welder out and I I did some welding, and uh, this is. The strut channel for electric electrical that you can buy this in the electrical department of your local uh, store and uh, I welded that into a, a giant eye shape all right and then this stuff is called um, uh, hat furring it's shaped like a hat and it's uh, a furring piece and I use those they come in 10 foot lengths so I, I use those to go across the eye. And then on the ends, I got this uh, little piece of channel here, as you can see. And uh, I bought all of this stuff at uh, uh, one of the local stores. It was called uh, ooh, HD Supply. Um, that was down in Orange County. But yeah, this stuff... Uh, um, made a nice rack. I made two of them, uh, the same thing. And then uh, this one still has straps on it, but uh, it will end up with cables like this within the next day or so. I'll be adding the cables here and taking the straps off. The straps are was something I slapped on real quick, and then I got involved in other things, and I never got a chance to uh, um, change them out. All right, so then I used 3-inch steel pole, and uh, I went about four feet long on it, and I welded some. Um, that's uh, that stuff they make use for putting signs up on the side of the road. I bought that at a metal store, a metal supply store, 
and a, a, a round metal plate that I welded on the bottom of the pipe and I welded it to that unit and then I set anchors down into my concrete slab to hold it and on the top here I use these heavy duty L braces with a bolt going all the way through so I could swivel it and then on the side I used a piece of band steel and that's a uh, 5 16 inch thick by inch and a half wide and it's probably about 30 inches long and the different holes in there are so I can change the slope of my panels at different times of the year. At this time of the year I have them sloped down quite a bit because the sun is low in the southern sky and uh, that, that's where I get my best power from as you could see when we were inside. All right so I made two of these. When I made the other one over here I only had a little piece of three inch pipe left over and I had a piece of four inch pipe so I slid the three inch inside of the four inch and I welded it all the way around and uh, that's the way it came out so I've got also got uh, these u-shaped um, clamps that are going to go over those pipes and add a couple more bolts down into the concrete for added security and strength those are one-way um, rivets that are in the concrete um, you hit them in with a hammer and once they're in they're locked in you can't pull them out all right and this one has the uh, the cable on it although the cable looks like it's getting a little stretched from all the winds that we've been having and speaking of winds they're saying that uh, we're going to have another major wind event starting tomorrow and going through the next day that's thursday and friday uh, it's a major wind event and <laughs> gusts between 50 and 55 miles per hour so i'm going to be ready for it this time and my flag is uh, shredded but uh, i wasn't about to put a brand new one on because of course the winds are coming it's just going to shred the new one so i'll let it shred the old one a little bit more and then go from there good old geo engineers look at those neat shapes up there and somebody said, yeah, that's jets burning fuel off. No, it's not. Trust me, it's not. And these, these guys are doing this stuff. They're putting X's and crosses and, and checkerboard patterns in the sky on a regular basis. And all of this cloud that are out here, all this stuff that's around in the sky, all comes from those uh, chemtrails. They're not contrails. Contrails dissipate very quickly. These things stay in the sky for a whole freaking day, okay? And they turn into clouds. They, they meld together and become a full cloud cover like that and like that. All right. So the girls are back in. They've been out free ranging all day. I got them, them back inside. Um, and uh, I'm going to get some work done now, hopefully. Uh, I've got stuff to do inside because the uh, winds are going to keep me from working outside. And I'm going to get in there and uh, uh, get some, make sure I have everything I need to start on that tomorrow. And I will post as I get it. And I can't do very good videos outside when the winds are gusting like that because you can't hear me even with my microphone on. All right, everybody. Big hole there where there used to be a bus. Seems kind of strange not seeing that bust after a whole month. Anyway, <laughs> this is G-Bear. Remind you to give me a thumbs up down there. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And share this with your friends, family, neighbors, relatives, everybody. Share it with everybody. And don't forget to stop over at Heat Seeker Bus and uh, check out some of the videos he shot. He did do a uh, uh, about an hour walk around the, my compound this morning and he shot a bunch of video. So he's going to be editing tonight and uh, and posting as soon as he gets it edited. So stop over, tell him G-Bear sent you, and have a good time. This is G-Bear signing off.